Casey, how are you? Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, it's an absolute pleasure. The pleasure's all mine. Um, so we've got a few days out now. Uh, first fight under Frank Warren. How are you feeling? I'm uh, feeling great. I just can't wait. You know, it's been a long wait uh, since I've, I've, I've fought and uh, being able to fight at this platform and being on his show. Yeah, I'm just really gr grateful and I can't wait to, to show what I'm about. Yeah, and this is your, I might think I might say, your ninth pro fight. Um, so you've got eight, eight, eight and oh, two KOs. Um, and in the seventh, you won the WBO European title. Yeah, that was on the eighth, uh, on my last oh, fight. Eighth. My, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was, was on the eighth, and um, yeah, I mean, my last three fight, I had, um, you know, I had a, a damaged hand, and then my last fight when I fought for the WBO European, I literally broke my hand on the second round. Uh, you know, uh, my, 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 after the second round, I couldn't use my right hand, so I was just using it to range my opponent and tap him, and in order to land my left hand, that's why I was doing a lot of switch. Uh, but I was, I was still happy with my performance because I was, I, I get the box eight round with one hand, and it's still way to pull out the win, so I was still happy and. Um, yeah, I mean, I, now my hands better. I've done a private operation last year um, at Manchester, and my hands have felt really good during the camp. So I can't wait to use it properly this week Saturday. So, I mean, for those who don't know, how would you describe your fighting style? I mean, obviously you're quite exciting. How? What, what, what would you? I you mean, like uh, it to? I'm a very, uh, I'm a, I'm a switch hitter, but uh, I'm a very adaptive. It depends on my opponent style. I tend to box. I my style changes depends on my opponent. So if my opponent is a normal uh, slick shot, then I become more of an aggressive fighter, front foot fighter. And if I see my opponent being um, a strong aggressive fighter, then I'm more like a slick, um, slick uh, mover and you know making miss and all that. Uh, so my style comes, um, you know, it changes depending on my opponent. And um, so it's, yeah, that's what makes my style a bit more attractive. I think uh, you know. Uh, it, it, my style carries it don't change. I mean, the last three fights, it just my style has been similar because I've been boxing with one hand, kind of. And is there any, um, you know, I mean, it, it seems like every other British fighter coming through now is the next Prince Nassim, but it, you know, people like to put labels on your. Is, is there any fighter you would say you admire, you try to emulate, or anyone you, you know, you think you, 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 you're similar to? You know, I've, I admire, I admire a lot of boxers. Um, from the history, like especially Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Shugray Robinson, Shugray Leonard, Manny Pacquiao, Floyd, these have been always been my favorite fighters. And um, and I try to emulate them, not emulate them, but I, I pick up a lot from them. You know, I can't be there. But the thing about boxing is, you know, you, you to be the best boxer is to be yourself because boxing star comes within your personality. And that's why there's always one Muhammad Ali. There's one Manny Pacquiao. I mean, no one can try and emulate Manny Pacquiao. I mean, if you try to box similar to Manny Pacquiao, the, his style takes so much energy. Just to box him similar to him for one round, it takes so much energy. You'll be tired of the first round. <laughs> so it, you can't really be them. But you you pick the best part of them and you create your own style. And your own style kind, kind of comes out from your personality. So, you know, it slowly, slowly, you will pick up stuff and, you will, you know, you develop and he comes out with his own style. And um, I think uh, for me to be the, to be able to, like, I'll combine like Muhammad Ali, Leonard, Floyd, Tyson, you know, I, I pick a bit of, from all of them and these are my favorite fighters. So, uh, but not trying to emulate them. I mean, for instance, him, I like him. So I pick up certain shots that I like from him. I pick it and I use it, but I don't try to be them because if, to be them, you never go that far. Cool. Um, listen, we'll come back to the boxing in a minute. And I know, you know, you're, 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 you've probably been asked this a hundred times, but your, your backstory is, you know, slightly different to, to most of the boxers. And now you, you came from Afghanistan um, and like pretty horrific, right? From from day one for you, wasn't it? Can you just, you know, like- Yeah, man, I mean, I was born in Kabul uh, in 1994 and, you know, that time the Taliban took over. It was, uh, you know, the fight was still going on and they, they kind of took over. So they were very, and they were, they were they were on top of everything. They, the government, they, 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 they've killed the government. So they, were, they everything was in their hands. So, you know, they, they, they went and killed people. Uh, civilians, they kidnapped people, uh, kidnapped their people's wife and hus uh, wives and daughters and all that, um, and killed the men. And um, I, well, you know, we lost a lot of family members during that time, and we kind of wanted. So um, by then, because of the way we look, and um, in 1998 we decided to leave Afghanistan. Um, and that's when the war started as well, because I think that's when the US and the uh, UK 
they wanted to get rid of Taliban, so they would start bombing everything, and a lot of civilians were dying due to rockets going in there. So it wasn't a safe place for us to be there. So we left in 1998. We become a refugee in Pakistan, and we were there for like um, two years until people came over there and caused problem for us there. Uh, putting a gun on my dad and all that and then uh, threatening on us and then my brother that was here um, you know he he got caught really in Afghanistan by Taliban he was beaten very badly and he left very early he left in Afghanistan I think in 1996 so it was in 1997 but he was here in 1998 he came in an easy way on an airplane and um, you know in 2000 he wanted us to come uh, UK make our journey to UK because of what happened in Pakistan so um, yeah, and we started our journey, but we wasn't travel like how we did. Uh, it came in an easy way, and we, because we were a big group of us, so we came by traffickers, and you know we came on foot, and it took us about two years, countries to countries, hiding, and uh, because the police are different to the UK police. I mean, people don't understand that when you pass in uh, in Europe, when you are crossing borders and that, the police are very brutal. When they catch it, they be, there's no you don't get there's no human right there. They I mean, they've, if you look uh, now, there's phones or there's videos of uh, refugees being actually killed by the, the police, and um, you can see how violent they are. But before that, at our time, there wasn't, so nothing would have got to the media. A lot of people died crossing the, the borders, and you know, um, uh, all of that. So it was in very fear, was crossing, the, you know, through jungles and things, was hiding in, in, in a small room for like weeks and months and that uh, in Russia, we, you know, it, we, and if we eventually we made our, we, we eventually made our journey to uh, Germany. When we were in journey, Germany, we wanted to kind of settle down because we were so tired of, of the journey, getting to Germany. I mean, it was, it was so hard. It was a long journey. So we were kind of tired, which like, we wanted to say, let's stay. So we kind of give ourselves to the government and the government treated us well. Germany was a really nice country where we, uh, they were actually cared about us. They said they gave us a flat, they were giving us food. And we kind of, and then, but, um, you know, they, they wanted us to stay. They were promised us we'll give you the visa and everything. And, but the, you know, from the, from the beginning of the journey, the, uh, my family's aim was to get to here. And they didn't feel like they've reached their goal. So they're like, nah, we've, we started a journey to get there and so let's just finish it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, we stayed six months in Germany and then went to Paris, we was in a camp, attempting, attempting on lorries to get here. And, you know, do you, you, we moved by, traffickers with traffickers nothing is guaranteed they get paid they take it to one spot and then you wait for another guy and then the other guy moves you to a different spot so you don't know none of the traffickers like that and they all had specific jobs and they nothing nothing is guaranteed so when they put you on a lorry it's not guaranteed they take your money but they're not guaranteed they just come into uk so on our third attempt we eventually got here and when we did uh you know when i remember when i was when it was in a i was inside an apple van with like an apple lorry and it, you know the the, the, uh, it was like a refrigerator inside so was, and I was on top of the refrigerator where the windows coming out it's frozen and uh, when we when we go into London the police you know when we uh, we banged the lorry for the police officer to I mean for the driver to let uh, to let him know that we're here and then he called the police and the police when they opened the lorry and uh, the first person they pulled up was me and I was just happy to be out there man I could if I think for Four, five, mile, four five, five more hours, I would probably die there, man. But I was just grateful. I mean, you, since there, it was like, it's like we reached heaven. So it was so, it was so relief. It was so happy that we get to UK. And, you know, uh, we was moved to, um, you know, the police took us to a cell, obviously to find out who we are. And um, my brother put a case away that we're going to be here. And so he, he filled in a form that he's going to look after us because he had a little business and, that he's gonna fund us and all that. Um, so he took us and yeah, we moved to Dawson and since then till now it's been history. It's been, it's been it's a great journey and uh, I can never forget that journey and that journey made me who I am. So I'm using the same mentality to get to, uh, to, to, to get to the top of the boxing. Yeah, I mean, just listening to you there, it's extraordinary. I mean, you've got to bear in mind that at the end of the journey, you were still only eight years old. So yeah. You were like, trekking through the jungles, hiding in rooms in Russia, you were yeah. sort of four, five, six years old. Yeah, I mean, I was uh, when we left. I was, I was uh, six, six and a half to seven uh, for the journey. Uh, when I got to UK, I was eight. Uh, so it was uh, from six to eight. My journey was from Pakistan to here. But um, I was around four to six. I uh, Pakistan and um, yeah. But I mean, the journey. I remember the journey because I was so small. I was getting dragged, and there was a lot of babies. So the baby was getting carried, and I was kind of getting dragged. And uh, there was a part I remember walking through the jungles. My 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 leg got stuck in the mud. My shoes got stuck. So nothing was left and I was walking bare feet on the jungle and my feet was all cut up and I remember was put 
into a small little room by traffickers to wait there for like, I think 12 hours or eight hours until another driver comes to pick us up. And I was hungry and I was crying. And, and you know, my family was scared of their life not to get caught, so we couldn't make noise. And I remember that I got my first beating to stay quiet. <laughs> And I remember till now, you know, I got pretty bad beating, but it was, I understand it was, it was the, that beating was, I think, better than getting beaten by the uh, police board officers, you know, they would have been more brutal. But um, yeah, I'm just happy. But when I look back at it, it, was, it felt like a great adventure, you know, because I was young. I mean, I didn't know that. But yeah, definitely, man. It was. God. And, and your dad, it sounded like, you know, he must have been like four. You said they pulled a gun on him. He, he was like lucky that he got to that part of the journey, really. Yeah, my dad, my dad's uh, old. Like I said, my mom and dad, when we got to UK, I mean, they, you know, they didn't have to leave Afghanistan or Pakistan, and leave their brothers and sisters. They could have still left there. They could have still hide. But the, their whole aim was for us, the, the, the children, to have a better life and give us an opportunity to live better and live safer. and. Um, so that's when I'm here now, you know, my dad's very old. He's given us everything he could. And now I'm just here to, trying to make them proud. And, you know, my mom, my mom was a great woman. And, you know, I lost her last year uh, due to cancer. And, you know, she fought very strong. She was given six months. She fought for two years, like a true champion. And, you know, and uh, it was unfortunate she passed away last year. And um, I'm just want to make them proud. And I know she's going to be watching above. And if I could make her proud, it would be great. Yeah. Um... It seems really, it seems it's almost weird to go back to boxing now after all that. But yeah, I, I mean, I guess that the, there is, yeah. you just meant you touched on it there that having been through all that, I suppose boxing's a bit of a doddle, really. I mean, it's, um, yeah, I mean, how did you get into the boxing in the first place when you came? Um, um, like there's, there's, there was a time in my life where I was in secondary school, I was kind of lost, I was getting into trouble, and my family wasn't happy of the way things were going with me. And, um, they told me to fix yourself up and go, if you like fighting, go to, to, to you know, Taekwondo or something, boxing. And there was a local boxing at Wolfram still. And there was about a few, four of us, me and my friend went there, joined in. And the first day, there was a kid who was watching the sparring, amateur spa. And there was a kid next to me, like, join the spa. And I was like, I was like, what sparring? He's like, you fight with a head gun. I was like, yeah, sure. He was there probably for like two weeks or whatever. It was my first day. I put the gloves on, and, you know, as soon as the bell ring, I just went towards him, head down, and just throw everything I could. And I looked down with him. 10 seconds, he was on the floor, you know, on the, on the floor. And the coach was like, listen, kid, you got speed and you like to fight. And I was like, yeah. So we carried on training. I improved after like four or five months. Uh, I came with three of my friends. None of them was there. They left boxing because boxing is a brutal sport. I mean, uh, you know, uh, boxing, it's like uh, when you get inside the water, you don't come out dry. You have to like, uh, you have to like every aspect of boxing. You have to like getting hit because it's, it's, you're going to get hit. If you go, like I said, if you go inside the water, you're not going to come out dry. In boxing, you're going to get hit and you have to like that part of it. And, you know, and I loved, I loved every aspect of boxing. And they, like I said, there was times I had a broken nose, broken cheekbone. My eye kind of twitched for a week, two weeks. I was vomiting. I was got hit in the ribs, broken ribs. I, I had went through hells and all that because I was, you know, I was in an unlicensed club. So an amateur and unlicensed, but I was more like an unlicensed fire at that time. And uh, I was I was fighting everyone. I didn't care. I didn't care about the rule or anything. I just like fighting. And, uh, yeah, and also I wanted to improve and uh, I was I was always wanted to get in with advanced fires and and, and I thought you know you know you get some beating and I, I took all that beating and it made more I am today and you know I carry I still love the sports and I'm still going forward definitely and and, and definitely better than the, the alternative which could have happened had you not come over here in the first place and started boxing exactly yeah so yeah full full full, full power to you mate um thank you okay thank just you. before we go i mean like i just I mentioned earlier on it, you, you've got your much delayed first fight with with under frank warren um he's got a couple of other guys in his stable who are quite interesting dennis mccann's one and of course sonny and charlie edwards um who i guess you know quite well i guess you watch their fights um what do you make of those guys and can we see you in the ring with him? In, 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 in Definitely. I mean, me and me and me and Dennis, uh, Dennis is a bantamweight, uh, and he's, he's young, he's still growing. We've been sparring more than 100 rounds together since he was, you know, when I was pro, he was still amateur. Since he was 15 years old, we've been sharing rings together because we were similar weight. And uh, he's a hell of a talent, and, you know, um, he's like a younger brother for me. And I think he's just going to grow. I don't see him being a bantamweight, even in like a three, four, five months later on. Probably this fight, he's got on a bit banting with, but after that, I don't see him. He's, he's growing so fast and uh, he's becoming very big. But with Sonny and Charlie, like I said, they're very, very great talent. And um, 
um, you know, they're both, cap both capable of becoming a world champion again and uh, love to share the ring with them. Um, and uh, our aim is to become world champion. There's four world title there. Uh, you know, we get a world title and hopefully share, you know, by, by then they'll become world champion and have the biggest super flyweight domestic fight in history at, at UK. And that that would be, be very great. So something like that would be. That would be amazing. And um, as you said earlier on, much earlier on, um, you would definitely make your family proud. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you. you have done already um, because to, to, to win the European title eight fights in is, is um, you're no slouch to be able to do that. So uh, I, I, do you set a timetable on it? Are you saying maybe in a year's time you'd like to become world champion too or whatever? Definitely. I mean, um, like I said, I mean, uh, we want to like, uh, we want to go up the ranking fast. And like I said, if I pull, if I, the, the, the performance I've set myself for this, if I can pull that, we will move in things much faster. And uh, I'll be definitely calling out one of the bigger uh, domestic fight out there and try to get that done to jump up the ranking faster. And um, you know, have my ha hand on a world title very soon. Um, but it all depends on this week's side. So I'm fully focused for Ajaz Ahmed. And once we get this done, we'll make our next move. The world your oyster, Casey. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you for having really me. Really good to see you. Speak to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye.